greatest athletic feat in, in the United States is to hit a home run. It's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful moment where the ball goes off the playing field, you know, and, and, and everything kind of stops and the guy gets to celebrate. And, and that really didn't exist before Babe Ruth. He kind of invented the home run. Nobody in the history of American sport has made the same impact that Babe Ruth made on the world of baseball, the inventor of the home run, a powerhouse who built the reputation of an entire club, a larger-than-life figure who revolutionized his sport. He was a phenomenon. He blew it apart. He blasted the baseball apart because there was no such thing as a home run. He so towered above everyone. There was no one in terms of sheer statistics and power that in, in his era who came even close to him. He was the first uh, major media star in American life. And it, he really transcended baseball. Babe Ruth is considered the greatest ball player who ever lived. I mean, there was nobody who played the game better than he did. At the turn of the 20th century, the United States of America was a land of opportunity. But as a new frontier without history, it was also quick to embrace modernity and celebrity. America needed real heroes. It needed men like Babe Ruth. America is a relatively young country, and um, we don't have we don't have like those folk stories. Like we don't have leprechauns here, and we don't have spirits. And we don't have King Arthur in the Round Table. We don't have any of that stuff, and we have tended to to take real life people and make them our folk heroes and our folk stories. And uh, Babe Ruth, for sure, is one of them. He's the biggest sports name in the history of the United States. His personality and his charisma were probably even better than his baseball playing ability. He had a, a, a face that could easily be related to. He had an everyman sort of quality about him. He was um, not at all removed uh, from, from regular life. And in fact, he had a humble origins, which uh, were a popular part of his success story. Those humble beginnings in baseball can be traced to Baltimore, an underprivileged port city on the East Coast, where George Herman Ruth was born in 1895. As a kid, um, he had it tough. He did have it tough as a kid. His father owned a bar, and his mother seemed to have some mental issues, and his mother died young, and, and his father died young, too, in a, in a barroom fight. He was constantly getting into scrapes in this rather poor town. He was ADHD. I mean, he, they tried everything. They used to wallop the heck out of him, and nothing would, would fix, so they put him in St. Mary's. Which was almost like a like an orphanage or reform school or both. There was a lot of discipline, and it was tough living, but it was like a baseball academy. So they put a bat in his hand, and that was the end of the story. He was out there um, morning, you know, rain, shine, afternoon, he had a bat in his hand, and by the time he left St. Mary's, he could play every position perfectly. He was playing um, as a kid, 12 and 13 years old. He was playing over 200 baseball games a year, which was phenomenal. He was hitting 500-foot home runs in St. Mary's as a kid. He was a phenomena. His talents caught the eye of local club, the Baltimore Orioles, in 1914. It was there he earned his nickname, Babe. But just five months later, Major League Giants, the Boston Red Sox, came calling. And it wasn't his hitting that interested them. He was a really athletic guy. He was about six foot two, um, which was kind of large at the time. And, and he could throw the heck out of a baseball. The thing not to lose sight of uh, is that he was a tremendous pitcher. He might have been a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame had he never picked up a bat uh, and become an outfielder in his life. He could play every position, so then they needed his bat, and they made him play every day in Boston. When he wasn't pitching, he was in the outfield. When he was in the outfield, he was pitching. He was one tired boy. He was hitting the ball out of the park, so people started realizing, wait a minute, this guy is such a tremendous hitter, maybe he just should play the outfield. His ability led the Red Sox to three World Series wins in 1915, 1916, and 1918. 
but his impact stretched beyond winning pennants. Baseball had been a low-scoring speed-based game. Ruth was ushering in the so-called live ball era. While the sport of baseball had been the national pastime since the middle of the 19th century, he changed the game with the way that he hit the baseball, changed it into a much more high-scoring offensive game, and this affected the game's popularity uh, dramatically. They, they taught you to swing down at the ball and to hit it into the ground and, and hit it hard and hit it, hit it into the outfield and, and you'd get to first base. And hitting it up in the air meant that you were going to hit it to an outfielder and that would be an out. And he came along with a different swing that he had perfected to swing upwards. And he swung upwards, but he, he, and he hit fly balls, but he hit them so far that nobody could catch him. A home run, there was no such thing as a home run or as many. When he was getting his first home runs, one team collectively for the year had 11. That's something to think about. He had 20. And collectively, for a year, one team had together 11. So does that tell you the, the impact that the home run had? His form meant there was a growing list of admirers. The recently formed New York Yankees headed the queue, and Red Sox owner Harry Frizzi was willing to talk business. He was the star of the Boston Red Sox until Harry Frizzi decided that he needed money more than he needed Babe Ruth. I mean, part of that was also was that Babe was kind of a pain in the neck. He was not your, your meek guy. Um, he was often, you know, into one sort of small trouble or another. Uh, he was always hitting Harry up for a little bit more money. Um, he was something of a pain in the neck. And so part of it was that Harry decided that, you know, the, the huge sum of money he would get from the Yankees would help. Also, uh, it would be nice to get Babe out of his hair. Ruth joined the Yankees in 1919, and moving to New York would make him a star. But the Yankees needed the Babe as much as he needed them. Until his arrival, they weren't even the best team in New York. When Babe Ruth was sold by the Boston Red Sox to the New York Yankees, the New York Yankees had never won a championship. And uh, almost immediately, uh, they were in the World Series, and they won uh, one within a couple of years of the Babe being there. If you do it in New York, it, it takes on a lot more import. New York was the place for him to be. It was the combination of being a fabulous athlete and New York being the media capital of the country. People ask me, what if he didn't go from Boston? What if he went to Oshkosh, Wisconsin? I'm going to tell you here and now, I thoroughly believe it in my soul. My mother believed it in her soul. You would have heard from Babe from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, because he was that kind of guy. The, te the team didn't define him. He defined the team. In fact, his home runs were saving baseball. In 1920, it was revealed that Chicago White Sox players had taken money to throw the 1919 World Series. It was known as the Black Sox scandal. With the fans disillusioned, baseball needed a hero. The game needed a savior uh, after the Black Sox scandal. Babe Ruth came along and 